Hi guys, my name's Rhys. I'm one of the applications engineers here on a very sunny day at National Instruments in the UK. I wanted to show you this cool little capacitance meter that I've put together using the NI MIDAC and LabVIEW. So for those of you who've not met LabVIEW before, it's a graphical programming language in which we wire together function blocks. Now, programming graphically is a very intuitive uh, way to program and it's easy to get your head around uh, what a piece of code does in comparison to the traditional method of reading down a long list of text. Anyway, that's not to say that it's Mickey Mouse. You've only got to look at the number of different companies who use LabVIEW to realize that it's an industry standard. So for you undergraduates out there, having a LabVIEW qualification on your CV is pretty powerful stuff. Let me introduce you to the NI MIDAC. Now this is a USB bus powered data acquisition device. It's got a couple of analog input and output channels on it, a few digital input and outputs, power supply voltage rails, but the best thing about it is that we can program it from LabVIEW. Now that allows us to use it as an oscilloscope, um, a digital multimeter, frequency generator, even a Bode analyzer, and the list goes on. Now what I've got here is a plug-in breadboard. And on the breadboard, I've built a bridge circuit using capacitors and variable resistors, and that's what allows us, um, combined with the frequency generator, the oscilloscope, and the digital multimeter on the MIDAC to make a capacitance meter. So let's have a little look in depth at what's going on on the uh, breadboard here. So here's the general diagram of a bridge circuit. There are many standard equations surrounding this setup, one of which allows us to determine the resistance value of any one of the resistors, so long as we know the values of the other three. The maths get significantly easier if VPP, known as the bridge voltage, is equal to zero. When we reach this condition, we say that the bridge is balanced. Now here's the circuit that we're dealing with. Because we're driving the bridge with alternating current, the capacitors can be considered to just be resistors. We can then adjust the variable resistors to balance the bridge. We employ the MIDAX frequency generator to supply AC of known frequency. And then we can use the oscilloscope on the MIDAC to measure VPP. Once the bridge is balanced, we can use the MIDAX digital multimeter to measure the exact resistances of the variable resistors. We now have everything we need to work out the unknown capacitance that we're trying to measure. Furthermore, we can let LabVIEW do all of the equation work for us. So what I've done here is I thought I'd have some fun and I went ahead and made my own capacitor. It's made out of two sheets of greaseproof paper and two sheets of aluminium foil, 20 meters long each. I've rolled them around a tube to make a cylindrical capacitor. So what I can do is see what sort of capacitance we can get out of this. If I just plug it in place on the breadboard, we'll use the laptop and we'll see what sort of capacitance we can get. Okay, so what we've got here is LabVIEW. Now, if I open up the virtual instrument that I've put together for this, you can see here the front panel, which we're going to be interacting with. And similarly, we could go and have a look at the code, which is hiding behind there. Now, back to the front panel, if I just get this running, the first thing we get opportunity to do is find our MIDAC. I happen to know mine's called Dev1. And then I can start that MIDAC running. Now the trace you can see on this graph is V peak to peak, that bridge voltage which we wanted to reduce to zero. So I'm going to pick up my screwdriver now and just start manipulating the variable resistors, uh, twisting them about until I can reduce V peak to peak uh, essentially to zero. There we go, that's looking pretty good. What you can see down here is that we've got an indicator letting us know if V peak to peak is small enough in order to progress to the next stage. The indicator's lit up, so I'm happy to go on. If you remember, what comes next is to measure the resistance values of variable resistors. You can see here our real-time resistance measurement. We're going to store the values for both R1 and R2, and then we can finally calculate the capacitance via two different methods and check that the answers agree. So I'm going to take up the DMM probes and just position them on R1. You can see we get the measurement 226. I can choose to store that. And then I'll just move across now, get the value from R2. Store that one as well. And now that I can see both values have been correctly stored, I can ask to calculate the capacitance. Well, there we have it. 
4.5, 4.6 microfarads is not too bad for kitchen foil. Well, thanks for watching. If you guys are interested in how I put the capacitance meter together, or you want to get your hands on the code itself, maybe you just want some more information on the NI MIDAC, follow the link in the description of the video. Likewise, if you guys come up with any cool LabVIEW projects, please do feel free to post a response. Thanks. Oh, it's got to be nearing 30 degrees out here. Will you get me a beer out of the fridge?